Hello and welcome to Watchmaking. Here is Ines and Lisa. This is the podcast about watchmaking that you've never heard before. We're going to take you on an exciting journey into the heart of timepieces, and our experts and guests will offer an exclusive insider's views, forecasts, and predictions on the industry. From the intricacies of watchmaking to its far-reaching implications across different domains, watchmaking is your go-to destination. So enjoy and uh, viva, viva watchmaking! watchmaking. Hello and welcome to the next episode of Watch Waking. Thank you for your support of our latest episode with Nicola Frediger and the discussion we had on sustainable practices in watchmaking and the alternatives found to answer this subject. And today we would like to welcome the father of the beast, the creator of the iconic Royal Oak Offshore and other amazing watches, uh, Emmanuel Get. And uh, with uh, Emmanuel, we are going to discuss the notion of watch designer and design and uh, its implications in today's world. So welcome, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. But uh, before we begin, I want to remind, uh, just a quick reminder for you all to vote for our podcast if you like it. And uh, don't hesitate to let your comments uh, on the podcast or maybe your ideas of the guests and the questions we can ask them. Um, so to start, maybe uh, if we say the word Royal Oak Offshore, uh, we think uh, this name brings uh, to mind a clear image of a watch, but also Uh, the one of a story, the story of a person which is not a watchmaker, but a designer. Um, so this shows the importance of uh, the association between an iconic model and its designer. But uh, Emmanuel, could you tell us maybe, uh, we know that this association did, has not always existed. And could you tell us maybe when this, the, this world watch designer appeared, first appeared? This actually this profession. It never appeared. Actually, it's you don't have any paper. You don't have. Uh, you have schools where you can do masters and and bachelor, but it's quite brand new. It's 10 years maximum. Uh, but there's no federal paper for watch designer. There is no CFC. There is no papers. Um, so you, I personally, I've learned on the on the ground. On the, I've learned uh, firstly with my father because he's a watch designer. <clears throat> and then I, st I started my career at 19 years old uh, with AP, and I learned how to design a watch, how to produce a watch, and how to follow the process of developing the, the, the designs with suppliers, with technicals. And I learned within the, in the company. And what was your, uh, your title when you were at the company? You were not, you, uh, you said on, on some interviews that you were not what, a designer. I was a designer. No, by, by 1986, it was 87, it was designer already. But it was brand new because marketing was, and, and uh, Franklish was brand new. So especially in the watch valleys and, and in the watch world, it was, you know, yeah, it was designer. And uh, so you became a watch designer, as you said, because you saw your father yes. design watches. Yes. And uh, so you... you But my father was not a designer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. my father was a stylist. Oh, that's and another was, word. Yeah, yeah. And he was very keen and he was very, it was very important to him that we present him as a stylist in uh, watch and jewelry. And so maybe going on this uh, this uh, idea of st uh, stylist, uh, we know that in this period, so which is uh, pretty much the 70s, the 60s, 60s, 70s. Uh, 60s 70s, we saw uh, many designers, what we call today designers, um, arrive. Uh, your father, Mr. Jean Claude Gait, uh Mr. Uh, um, Gérald Janta. And uh, for example, also uh, Mrs. Uh, Jacqueline Dimier. Yeah, there were, there were, there were. Basically, there were four fathers and mothers of our, of my, my, my job. Uh, it was Gérald Janta, Jean Claude Guette, uh, Gilbert Albert, and Jacqueline Dimier. They were really the first four um, in this to be to to work as a watch designer. But they they were not watch designers uh, from their from the beginning. They yes, they were. were. They, they were, were jewelers. Uh, right? My father was a jeweler. Uh, Jonta was a designer. 
probably two as well, but I'm not sure. Uh, Gilbert Albert was uh, uh, was a jeweler, and Jacqueline, I think I think she was working in the advertising. If I'm if I'm correct, but I'm not sure. But I think she was she was uh, she was uh, uh, working designing uh, advertising. But it is interesting that uh, people were not in the majority. They were not designers. Uh, is a basic. Uh, you know education but uh, at the end they created the uh, this notion of watch designing watch design have you seen the, the signs of the creation of the new profession in the 60s yes uh, before the 60s uh, it was uh, case manufacturer and bracelets manufacturer was designing but they was like doing samples and sending selling the the samples to the brand and they were like Buying this bracelet, buying this case, and buying these dials, and then match together, and there were the, the design was done. In the early 60s, there's this new young generation arrived, and they decide to do uh, design. They decide to do uh, design for watches, and um, they had a huge market, and they had a huge audience because um, nobody had this this before. So it's where you can see. Uh, new incredible watch, incredible designs. It was in the 60s. But it was as well not only in the watch, uh, in every every branch, uh, architects and, and furnitures and lamps and stuff, they, you know, the design exploded at this time. Yeah, in every, in every part. Yeah. And now I think uh, there's a lot of love to uh, the design of the 60s, uh, 70s and 80s, especially in the watch making, in the watch community. Yeah, uh, it's, not, it's not enough to my point of view. Everybody say, oh, we love the 60s, the 70s, but everybody love the Rylock and then and the Nautilus and that's it. But there is so many other watches and there is these young crowds that you can find the the super fan of all the designs that the uh, that these two watches but a lot of uh, you know brands uh, we will go straight to the substance of uh, of this podcast um there are a lot of love towards this uh, design of uh, 60s 70s 80s and you said it's not enough but how can we build something new if we will constantly be back and uh, look back and uh, try to find some inspirations uh, from the from the past you need to be creative <clears throat> you need to be creative and um, i think it's the the world is like that it's always a repetitor you know all the time and it's uh, we just leave the 50s with Phil and Murray, it was the 40s and, and uh, the 50s, and that, that was, you know, and now it's like 60s, 70s, and soon to turn to the 80s. And then maybe in 20 years, going to be the 40s again, and it's it's always like that. It's why there is a, a huge uh, a huge love for the, the, those, those watches, but those sports watches, because it's more mass market, uh, like the Royal Oak or the, the Nautilus, and everybody tried to copy the, the Royal Oak. And yeah, but you talked about the 60s and 70s watches, but what are the features of those watches? Different. They're different, yeah? They're so different. Yeah, they're stone dials. They're stone yeah. dials and bracelet and cuff and and necklaces. So to ours, yeah. And so to ours, and, and they were different. They were designed, they had the shape. My father was... The, the the designer of shape in the shape he loved to design shape in the shape have a square watch with a round opening or a round watch with a square opening he loved that and um, um, there was like be different the asymmetrics I'm I'm super fan of asymmetrics and uh, and and that was that, that that was the the motto of this of this period. I read you once said that marketing killed creativity. Yes. Uh, can you explain what you meant by that? Um, marketing is all about money. And creativity, it's, it makes money. And there is some brands and some groups, they, they only think about money and not about product, not about creativity. And they believe that to make money, they have to look like others who's doing very well job. And... 
So marketing, basically, marketing was good at the beginning. Uh, for example, the good example was Ebel um, back in the 80s, where the, Mr. Bloom went to the U.S. to make a marketing school, and he came back. He came back to Switzerland and said, I'm going to do marketing. And everybody knew what marketing was, but he did a fantastic job for, for Abel. But it was good at this time to, re, to relaunch the, 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 the industry. But now it's like, take an example, Rolex doesn't do marketing. But they did creativity last year. But they did creativity. Um, Raya, Audemars, they don't do really marketing. They, they just do creativity they don't care about prices and they don't care about who they will sell to and they don't care about what the others do they do what they want that's important right for that's a watch designer or, de or jewelry yeah. designer yeah. to not look at what others yes do. yes yeah. and i'm fortunate enough to work for this lvmh and and mr bernard say mr uh, arnaud say uh, uh, design first and then the money will come automatically and i think it was it's a very 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 beautiful uh, way of business so for you uh, first uh, you have to think of a design and then you'll think uh, and then will come the watch yes right? so where where does your uh, creative process start from everywhere from everywhere yeah what is design for you That's a hard question. That's a hard question. Where is one one uh, one inspiration? Uh, because uh, I read that you said that uh, you always wanted to be a watch designer. And yes. What inspired you to uh, design watches, and what is by seeing other watches, or is it in other domains that you find inspiration? Watching other uh, other watches and watching um, what brands did in the past and what the brand do now. Uh, give me a lot of uh, input. Uh, walking on the street or, or reading a paper or, or looking people watching on the, walking on the street give me give me ideas. Um, everything give me ideas. I'm 24/7 and I'm in my clouds and <laughs> a bit tiring sometimes. It's a bit tiring, but. <laughs> But uh, and what uh, does material? Uh, uh, what part does it play in in your design process? Do you think about material before designing? No shape, shape, shape first. Shape first, and then you add and rubber, for uh, yes, example. Yes, whatever. <laughs> uh, shape first, and and different as well. It's important for me to be different to design things. So it's dependent. Then it's depend on your client. If it's mass market, you just close to the look like. Um, even with some, you know, a little touch of creativity, but it's very, it's not copy, but because I don't like to copy, but it's, it looks like, and then when you have working for exclusive brand, it's really to be different. Do you, do you find it uh, harder now to find ideas for a design? Because we live now in a fast paced environment, uh, we have internet and, uh, do you find it harder now to find the unique idea for your design? No, it's. It's a it's a game for me. It's uh, it's a game to to think of watches and to find ideas. It's really a game. And also, you you um, uh, yeah, you invented the, the offshore. You yeah. designed the offshore, but you have also uh, reimagined uh, some models which were already issued. For example, the iPod uh, watch. Yeah. And I was wondering, um, is for example for the offshore, is the company allowed to change? Uh, your design or and for you how do you feel about another uh, designer altering your own design I hate it oh you do mm. but you like to do it for other others yes. Okay. yes of course no no I hate it. what I hate so you understand Mr. Genta when yes of course I understand Mr. Genta and I was young and he, and he was the first and the last time I've seen him And uh, he was so upset and so unhappy. He said, he, he screaming at, in, at Basel at the booth and he's screaming, like, you kill Mario Locke, you kill Mario Locke. It's like, but at the end, I was right, he was wrong. <laughs> but how did you feel when uh, he uh, confronted you? I was young. I was like 24 something. So I was young. So I was kind of little... You know, at this, age, you, at this age, you're just like, you don't care about the old people. And it's like, oh, he's old. He doesn't understand it. 
Where did you find uh, the idea for for offshore? Steve Orquat was the CEO, asked me to imagine uh, a new Royal Oak to attract the youngest generation because the the Royal Oak, the sales of the Royal Oak was plunging terribly and, and the sales was like decreasing and they were like, okay, what are we going to do? We need to find a replacement or we're going to stop it. They, they was like, they were like, Talking, uh, they were the, at Patek Philippe. Apparently, they were thinking the same with the Nautilus. And so he said, "We need a Royal Oak to attract a younger generation because our watch is like getting aged, like <laughs> getting old, like the our clients." So, um, so that was the briefing, and it's very. And so I had the idea of. It was the beginning where a woman started to wear a men's watch. And that makes me very upset. I don't know why. It's very macho. I'm sorry. I'm not a macho. <laughs> you were young. <laughs> I was young and stupid. And, you know, and uh, so I said, I'm going to design a watch that only men can wear. So I had to. And, and the, the, the difficult thing was not to kill the royal oak, to take uh, the uh, DNA of the Royal Oak and to, you know, to be, but not to kill the, the, the Royal Oak and not to kill Janta's designs, which for me was the best watch. For me at this time was the, the gold, the Royal Oak was the best gold watches in, uh, on the industry and it still is, huh, to my point of view. But so the, the, the idea was to, to take this DNA and to, to take this input to design a new Royal Oak, which is make different. And I remember to see the gasket very, it was a tiny little white line and I said, okay, maybe we should make it appear, make it bigger and then make it in blue, like the same color of the dial. And then, oh, well, we can put the rubber on the, on the crown and the pushers to, to match with the, uh, with the gasket and, and the, the dial. And that was the right, the, the offshore. But it appears that you created also a watch for a woman because, uh Women now they prefer also offshore. Some some women. Some yeah, but and they like to very, wear bulky yeah. things on yeah, yeah, their wrists. Of course, everything went since then. Everything went big, even for women. No? Actually, now it's in reverse with the design because before, like uh, men's watch were bigger and uh, women's watch were mostly like you know small, something tiny uh, with uh, diamonds uh, and uh, precious stones. Yeah, and now. Uh, on the reverse, uh, a lot of women, they prefer uh, something bulky, like with the simple design, instead of something with the diamonds yes, and yes, uh, now, precious stones. No, and then uh, we yes, have like rainbow, yes, rainbow now, watches. No, no, my father designed the rainbow for, Piage, for uh, Rolex and Delano in 77, I think. And we see that coming uh, in other brands, also uh, these uh, this, uh, past years. We saw a rainbow, uh, for example. In yeah, actually, men, men's watch uh, with the diamonds. But do you think it, we, we can't talk about women's no. watch and men's watch no. at, the, at the moment? Yes and no. Um, now, men's wear uh, watches with diamonds and stones and it's very I love it I don't have any but I would love to wear a full pave watch and um, and but, but back in the 80s and end of 70s but back in the 80s a lot of men's not in Europe but in in the US or in Asia a lot of men were uh, wearing uh, jewelry watches yeah, and smaller watches also right smaller watches and and I remember when I lived in Texas uh, back in 2000, uh, there is all Texan men, uh, they were wearing uh, full pavé uh, Rolex uh, watches in yellow gold with full pavé diamonds. And it was, for them, it was like normal. And, um, but you have also the woman watch, which is like a jewelry. But for me, for example, women watch it's uh, most mostly Van Cleef and Arpel, with, because it's uh, super raffinated, it's, uh, very uh, nicely done. Yeah, it's a, but it's with the feminine design. But uh, for example, some brands that uh, they uh, reduce the size of the dial or they reduce the size of the uh, the case. 
uh, or they put uh, the diamonds uh, on the bezel and say, okay, this is the female model. For me, it's not, they, they don't put a lot of effort in creating something feminine. It's, uh, it's better now. Honestly, it's better now. But believe me, like back in like 10, 15, 20 years ago, Brands were so stupid about ladies' watches. It was like, oh, we're going to make a, a ladies' watches. So we take the men's, we put a pink dial and some diamonds on the bezel and a pink uh, strap. And that's the woman case. And that's because it's smaller, wow. we put a quartz movement also yeah. sometimes. <laughs> it's just like, oh, what a respect to the woman to do that. It's, it's all about creativity. So you, when you design, you design with a gender in mind or person? It depends on the brand. I have a, a brand that it's mainly women, so I think about the women. But you never know. I design watches for women that men in Asia can't wear it. You design what you you like, actually. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. But it's not what honest. It's not necessarily what I like. It's what I I feel. It's a sensation. It's a it's a feeling. So yeah. What do you think about the reissuing of? Uh the models of the past from the 80s, 70s we have. Do you think it will be a trend uh, this year or for the upcoming years? I think it's a trend. Uh, if it's well well made, done, uh, uh, it could be nice. Uh, Vacheron did a great job with the 222. It was fantastic. And I'm sad, hopefully, I don't know if we're going to see more this year, but uh, I'm sad they didn't do more. Um, maybe to replace the the overseas, but but it's my opinion. No, it's certainly my opinion. We will see it watches and wonders. We will soon. see watches and wonders. But, but we see that some brands are really starting uh, this uh, to go in this direction. For example, Piaget with the uh, yeah Polo yes. nine yes. But do you think that kills the creativity behind uh, for the brand? But the brand needs to make money. So, so it's more now it's more marketing or more creativity? It's both, actually. What has been done in the past was creativity. So why don't you relaunch creativity? Um, you can use the same, the same model that has been designed 20 years ago, 30 years ago. But uh, you can make new dials, you can make new movement, you can improve your quality or the, the, the way you, you produce it. Uh, but the base is creativity. And uh, I th we saw a lot of collaboration with uh, watch between watch brands and artists from different domains, such as uh, we know John, May uh, John Mayer, Travis Scott, uh, Takashi Murakami, or uh, Tamara Ralph recently with uh, AP. And um, is it the only way for brands to uh, cr uh, create pieces, time pieces, which are more creative? And different. Do you feel like it's a way for brands? Collaboration is a way for brands to be more creative. In the case of um, in the case of AP, uh, it just a cherries uh, on the on the top. Uh, they don't really they don't need that. Uh, they just do it for fun with John Mayer or the other uh, rapper in with the perpetual calendar, which is, Scott, yeah. Yeah, which is beautiful, actually. The the ceramic, the bronze ceramic is fantastic. And so it just, they make it for fun. They don't, they don't really need it. Some other brands, they need it, but it's very sad. And uh, because it's a lack of creativity of the, of the, of the management, I believe so. And do you think that uh, this lack would be uh, balanced with having a creative director or a designer uh, like we don't know many designers nowadays uh, watch designers uh, in uh, in watch brands we know uh, for example at Bulgari but yeah. uh, are there any others do we need to name them actually do the brands do you think that uh, the brands should name the person behind the watch? yeah they should because now we have schools we make papers you know we, we train young kids to become a watch designer so then you know and they, and they make a good job and they make brands becoming rich or they 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 help the brands to to develop their business and so they should be yeah they should be named yeah because in other other domains there is not this uh, this uh, phenomenon you know who designs a car or not a car but yes uh, most designs we know who are the designer yeah in in the fashion industry you know but 
uh, in a jewelry you don't necessarily know everyone in the furniture you know them because they, they create a, an object and a furniture but i'm not sure you know all the designers at ikea for example you know some of them uh, because they talk about them but you don't know all of them but if we're talking about the iconic uh, watch iconic models so what is an iconic watch is The beast, <laughs> <laughs> offshore. <laughs> oh, it's a, it also actually an interesting question. What should we consider as an iconic watch now if we are, have all these uh, um, reissued uh, models from the past and not so many variety of design? To me, an iconic watch, it's a very good question. To me, an iconic watch is it's a watch who have a minimum lifetime of 20 years minimum and still be remain the same as the first one who's been launched they can have be an evolution on the production for quality uh, problem and issues and but it's still the same and nautilus and royal oak and oysters are the best example because they're still the same and when you see uh, a, a royal oak is still the same as the number one Uh, the G12 of, of Chanel is a good example. It's a, it's a now it's an it's an icon, it's an iconic watch. But the others, the 222, no, because they stop it for 30 years. They stop it. But the one maybe they will relaunch it. They relaunch it because they probably thought it's an icon, it's an iconic watches. But no, it's not, because they didn't stop to do it and produce it. The Polo is the same. Uh, since 89, they stopped to produce it and to sell it, and it went out of market, and then they rela relaunched it because they believe it's a beautiful watch, and it's why they should do Piaget, it's all about, it's the Polo. And it's, it's, a, it's a great thing that they, they, they have done. So now we need to look uh, back uh, to the late 90s to see what uh, models have been issued and they're still here on the, uh, the market. Yeah, but it's very simple. Huh? It's Royal Oak, Nautilus and, and, and Rolex. But what is interesting is that uh, I think Royal Oak and the, off uh, the, the Offshore both didn't uh, weren't successful at the beginning, right? They, they took how long? Four years for the offshore uh, we launched it in 93 and the first success good success which was starting to be interesting it was in 97 yeah so, so four uh, years yeah yeah four years and when uh, Audemars launched the first uh, Royal Oak uh, Georges Goulet was the CEO at this time uh, validated the design of uh, Jean Argenta and he said we're going to produce 1,000, uh, 1,000, no more. And then he hired uh, head of sales and Jacqueline Dimier and they, 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 they saw something behind the, the rail log, they saw the potential. And uh, they start to work and develop, and and that's, and that's it. Yeah, we would like to come back to the uh, current design in in watchmaking. Uh, do you think that uh, there is more of the design uh, in watchmaking uh, within uh, indie brands, independent brands, than with yes. the oh, brands yes. with a the history? They have more freedom. <laughs> they have more freedom. It's not the freedom. Huh? They have more uh, gut to to. They take risk. But they have to, they have no choice. They, they're coming from nowhere, they're small brands, and if they want to sell and be, be success, they have to be different of, of what everybody does. So they're creative. But they, they're more, for now, they're more creative about movement. There is a lot of designs, but it's within, it, uh, you know, complicated movement or something like that. Do you consider, sorry, do you consider um, as a design of a watch uh, collaborations with uh, some uh, uh, watch magazines of the watchmakers and they produce some uh, limited edition watches? It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I, I like it, the, the concept, I like the ideas, but it's not really creative. And how do you see, uh, how, what can you tell about the uh, collaboration between Uh, collectors, the, the, uh, those who collect watches and watch brands to create something new, unique or some kind of a limited edition as well. I think it's fantastic. If you are collectors and you have money and you want to have your own watch, it's fantastic. I've done some uh, in the past uh, for private clients who wanted to have their own watch. 
And so I designed and made, produced the, the watch for them. And they have only number one unique piece. And the, it's the, the watch. At some point, when you have so much money, uh, you want to be you, you have everything uh, so you can have all the Rolex all the Patek you want but you want to have your own things and it's it's interesting for them to work with a designer with a producer and and that's that's a good thing for the business and what do you think about the concept of only watch they that the brands produce like one piece specifically with a specific design to does it allow creativity yes is it's depend it's depend the brand uh, a lot of brands uh, design a new unique piece and some ma the majority of them they just put colors or make a new dial or uh, so it's not really really creative but i think it's fantastic it boots the it boots the designs and i remember when i was kids and then begin early in my career we had the in geneva we had uh, an exhibition called uh, montres et bijoux and uh, it was every year one year in geneva one year outside and then at the end it was only outside in other cities but brands were designing new watches only for this exhibition is it important for a designer to attend uh, exhibitions or salon, like, for example, Watches and Wonders? It's probably that kind of exhibition who, who made my father, who made uh, Gérald Janta and, and, and not Jacqueline, but maybe Jacqueline and, 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 and uh, Gilbert Albert, yeah. Because they were talking about this time, they were talking about designers. So it's essential to attend such salons to get inspired or to yeah, see what Yeah, but they were doing for brands. Huh? So it was the brands who were designing a new watch especially for this exhibition and i remember i was designing unique pieces for uh, for audemars it was very fun and then there was like and one year was 97 i was in charge it was in berlin i was in charge of the exhibition so i designed only only uh, jewelry watches only for women and i we exhibit only this and everybody was shocked audemars piguet jewelry watches uh, and it was success can I also ask about uh, Jacqueline Dimia? You yeah. worked with her, and uh, I mean, she created the female uh, version of Royal Oak. Yes. And uh, do you consider that women are more apt to create watches for women, ladies' watch, or it doesn't matter? No, look, my father designed the best jewelry watches and the best uh, women's watches in the world and it's a man. I think it's just the, uh, and I do the same. I have the same uh, uh, sensibility of my father. So I love to design watches for women and I'm very successful for in that too. Yeah, and I think there are more desi men designers of the watch than women at the moment. Because at this time, watches was a man's job, a, a man's world, because it was technical. So it was, uh, and... If we reviewed, women are powerful and work for not very long. Huh? My father was made to be a housewife in the kitchen and and, and make babies, and and it's how she she was raised, and so it's it's quite new. Maybe in fifty years, it's gonna be more. We're gonna be more. Women. So there will be equality in a yeah gender yeah. Equality. Hopefully, hopefully, it's gonna be equal. Look, when I was. 22, uh, my, uh, I was upset because women was wearing men's watch. <laughs> so it's, my mentality has changed a lot. Yeah, I was in, now, now it's yeah. Yeah, changing. Yeah. I wouldn't have this, you know, this reflection now. <laughs> How do you feel uh, about women wearing your uh, I'm creations? I'm proud. I'm super proud. You know, I, I'm so happy to make people happy. I believe that if they wear my designs, it's because they love it. So that makes them happy. So, um, so that makes me happy. And uh, looking to this uh, more uh, technical and mechanical aspect, do you feel like design and mechanical aspect are uh, very separated fields? Um, do you feel like one impacts the other? A technical impact the designs, of course. Uh, but sometimes the, the, the design impact the technical. And the... Um, the ex CEO of uh, Chanel, ex when they launched the, the boyfriend with the, um, the movement was hiding inside the flowers, uh, he said the designer make the, the flowers and said now we have to hide the movement behind these flowers. And they did it. So, so sometimes, you know, you have the... It's, it's rare, but sometimes you, 
Design comes before the technical aspect. Yeah, be, be fine. Uh, design comes first. Uh, is it difficult to uh, to work with uh, with? Uh, uh, I know you you said that you went to see suppliers when you were making the offshore. Um, is it something that you think all designers, what designers must do, and do you think they actually do it, or is it uh, like are those world um, of design and mechanical aspects separated? Uh, in... If you're a good designer, you know exactly how to produce a watch. So that helps and you can avoid problems, but you're not God. So sometimes you do something cool and then they, they say, no, we can't do. But they have to prove, in my case, they have to prove me why they can't do. Because I got 30 years of experience and, you know, I was born in this industry. So you have prior knowledge regarding yes. how a watch works. So And then the, the 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 watchmaker or so they always say no first. That, that that's it's always been like it's that. A given. Were, it's, it's, it's a given. It's a given. But then they think and they say, oh, we thought about this and we maybe find a solution. But you, when you launch a product, you launch a, a new designs. You have to be close to the suppliers and make the find the problem together, find the solution together. And sometimes I have to redesign my my designs because to adapt. Of, but we have to dis to to discuss it, and they have to prove me that is not possible. And then, okay, I, so I redesign, and and we re basically redesign together to make it possible. So it's all about discussion between. It's connection. It's all about be close with suppliers, and and uh, it's it's. I'm lucky enough that I've, I can't work like that. But I know that some in some brands, the designer have nothing to do with the with the development and that's terrible terrible do you think a watch designer should uh, nowadays should have uh, a specific uh, uh, education in uh, design of the watch because uh, we've seen a lot of architects who became the watch designers and their models are quite interesting uh, can designers from other domains become a successful designer in watches i've seen one Uh, that I don't know personally, but I have a lot of respect. He uh, came from the car. Fabrizio Buonamassa. No, 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 it's not but him. But he as well, I think he came from uh, from the car industry. Okay. Uh, no, it's another one. He's much younger, but he does a, such a great job. But I believe and I suspect, I never spoke with him, that he fell in love with watches. And he he learned, he went through the suppliers and he went through the, the development and he learned. So that it's, he probably did the same with the car, but he did the same with watches and you can see on his designs. So he was curious and went, uh, and went, uh, yeah, went uh, it was not to a, understand. It was not a bread and butter job. It was just a passion. Design, now I'm designing watches, but... I have to learn how to how to produce the watch to to understand more the, the the process of the designs. Then you have some designers who have, don't don't care and they're famous for something else and they do watches and uh, and it's uh, just a watch. And what is the difference for you uh, between designing a watch and designing a jewelry? I, I love both, and and I design. And if I can do. Uh, a jewelry watch with a, uh, a jewelry watch <laughs> it's even better but um, it's a combo huh? combo it's a good combo it's my favorite because it's very creative so uh, like but my my vision of this it's uh, how the, the the watch is gonna live within 20 years uh, 10 years 20 years and how you can wear it on your wrist and how it's gonna live on the wrist and, and get old and you know For both and jewelry and, and, and watches. So uh, ergonomy, but also uh, the, the materials you use? Yeah, well, it's basically uh, steel and, and gold so and platinum. So it's, well, uh, but I, I've, I've learned to, I, I work for a mass market, so so I've designed plastic watches as well. So, well, so. But uh, could you tell us maybe if you saw uh, recently, because you said that uh, when you saw ceramic uh, Uh, with a Chanel, you yeah. you thought that it was uh, 
I'm quoting what you're saying, the a new stainless steel. Did you recently see uh, um, a material which you think will be used in the future? No. Nope. Yeah, ceramic was interesting because it was in 2003, early 2003. That I was in Paris at the dinner and the guy next to me had the, G, the G12 black. And I was like touching and putting on my wrist and I was like, wow, I love this. And I said, this is the next stainless steel of the 21st uh, century and everybody was laughing at me even AP I did, because when I I moved back to Switzerland I left to work for a fossil group in Texas and then I came back to Switzerland and I opened my my studio and I worked for three years for uh, AP and I designed the the first uh, offshore in, in ceramic black ceramic and it was like nah nah But now what we see is yeah, <laughs> a lot funny. of ceramic it's watches. Very funny. And um, is there? You said that jewel, so yeah, jewelry watches would be a trend. Do you think that uh, maybe fume dials or what trends do you see for 2024 in watches? And what what about uh, 3D printing, which is 3D printing? Yeah, pr uh, 3D printed watches. No. No. Okay, no, not a new icon. No, I. I think a watch must be done by hands or machines, but you know, they, they have. So in design, what trends do you see? Yeah. Or what trends can you name at the moment? Stones, jewelry stones, jewelry watches, uh, color stones, a lot of color stones. But On the dial or? Everywhere. Everywhere. I think we, we've been this, uh, this uh, old watches, you know, these vintage watches looks like for many years now we're turning to roaring 20s to back to the bling bling and 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 back to the 80s and jewelry watches yeah and uh, in watchmaking we always uh, talk about the new dufour the uh, you know some names uh, very famous names uh, like a new f Peugeot when yeah. we're talking about the young generation yeah And could you name someone who might be a uh, new Emmanuel Gate, a uh, new Gerald Genta, whom you see now emerging? None for now. So we have no one who can create uh, an iconic watch. But we know it's, it's going to be an, uh, an icon watch in, in 20 years for now. <laughs> And which uh, we see many, uh, many uh, we will see many uh, revivals of brands. Um, for example, with uh, Universal Genève, yes. or do you uh, do you expect those? Uh, do you? Oh yes, are, are there's you... so many brands, sleeping brands, that would love to see me back. So many. And Which one, for example? Can you name a few? Delano, Coram. But Coram is not quite sleeping beauty. It's not. It's not forgotten. At least it participates in the events no, and the sleeping, produces the watches. Sleeping. They're missing something. They, they have just, potential. They, they have a huge to... potential. Girard Perregaux has a huge potential. It's really sad. Ebel has a huge potential. And what do you think those brands will need to... A good designer. A good designer. <laughs> so we come, back, we come back to the subject of this discussion. Yeah, yeah we a need... Good, a we good need... designer. Stop talking about uh, with marketing people and, and stop copying everyone and just look at you, what you have and your DNA and, and think. So we're like in watchmaking, we're talking about the lack of labor. Now in design, we're a lack of labor, uh, yeah. lack of quality designers. Yes. But do you think that the brands should appoint a designer? Because you, you're a, you're a, you work for yourself, you're freelance, right? So you work for different brands. But for young designers, is it better to, uh, to work directly and to be, uh, to be I think for, hired? Yeah, for young designers, it's nice to start your career with a, with a brand. And I give a lot of um, talks, a talk, uh, to the um, to the um, school, the design school, uh, watch design school in in La Chaux de Fonds. And uh, it was funny once there was a young guy say, uh, uh, "I have a question. Uh, what we should do to find our first job in mass market watch brand or high end? Because our teacher said that." Uh, we should start with what with mass market and go, you know, in the karaoke go up. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck them. 
It's just like you will find your job where you find your job. Because it's a small industry, there's only a few places left, you will find where you find. If you start to relax or Patek, great. If you start to Fossil or Movado, great. It's all about designs, it's not about the reputation of the brand. It's about you experience will, you will get from... And you uh, will get your experience from your first job. Yeah, and if you are creative, you you can if work you creative, anywhere. Yeah, I started... Oh, well, um, I was I started my career with AP, so I learned before because with Piaget and every everything I, I've seen at home with my dad. But then I was uh, AP, and then I left uh, with AP. We were producing watches at twenty five, uh, half million, uh, a million point five, uh, and I joined the Fossil Group, and it was mass market, and I was doing watches at fifty bucks, and uh, I had to re relearn again, and but everything was about designs. Yeah, and adaptability. So yeah, yeah, and you can you can produce watches that cost ten ten dollars uh, with your designs. So, uh, what is your biggest disappointment? I would say, broadly say in the profession of a designer. My biggest disappointment <laughs> about my job or what as I've a done? designer, was as a watch designer. Is it in a job? Um, that there is too much copy and not enough creativity. And everybody's, you see, when you when you see, for example, uh, the engineer or the Riviera or even the Polo, they all looks like the the Royal Oak. The case it's like made like the Royal Oak. Because uh, maybe it's uh, because one maybe designer behind it. Because because the Royal Oak is very successful. Um, it's good business. But when you see, Gérald Janta was a very clever, very smart designer. He created three icon watch. It's the Relog, the Nautilus, and the Engineer. And three of the, those three watches was our iconic watch. But if you study them very well, they're all different. The integrated watch, stainless steel integrated uh, uh, watch, but they're all different. And that makes the success because it's designs. And So why they relaunch the engineer? Why they don't do the first one, the one that that Gérard uh, Janta uh, designed? Why they have to do it like a, a Royal Oak? Why the Riviera? My father designed the first Riviera. Why you do a Riviera who looks like a Royal Oak? It's it's like this. It is not creativity. This is marketing. Like we, we talk But about it's that. coming back to the shapes and the models of the 80s and 70s. Yeah, yeah. and the, the Riviera on the Genoa was created in the 70s. So. But it, I think it's uh, it's the you know the uh, the trend uh, of uh, the uh, past several years because uh, there is a lot of interest towards these uh, old school uh, timepieces, the design of the 80s, 70s. Now, uh, rising of these. Uh, timepieces uh, on the secondary watch market. Yeah. So maybe that is why the brands, they try to go with the flow uh, of this trend. But as trend a designer, to... you, you don't want to go with the flow, right? No, you want to be different. Yeah, and we see that, do you think that icons can only be created when you go against what is... I think so. ...normalized or defined? I think so, because jean when he designed the Royal Oak, he, he went against the normality And, and you did. Was, and I did as well. And it works. And um, I think that's the key. And what do you, what would you say is the biggest challenge uh, nowadays for a watch designer? It's to design. The biggest challenge is stop watching a screen and stop watching uh, computers and internet and just put yourself in front of a white page and sketch and sketch and sketch and the idea is coming that's my biggest fears right now about the young generation because they don't do it i've seen that the last past 10 years so yeah so it's a paperwork mostly yes when i started you know in 1986 we had no computer we had no internet so we were like in front of a white page do you think that the new generation is capable of doing so The one born with the computers already. I think so. If you're designer, if you're designer, you can do it.
Okay, the most important question, artificial intelligence. What do you think of it and uh, would it be helpful in, des in designing a watch? It scares me a lot because I know that at some point, some big, big one marketing minded, they will design their own. So they won't work with designers. So that scared me. Um, maybe that will help at some point to, that maybe that will help. Do we think that the uh, designers should look closely to artificial intelligence to tame it? But maybe I'm an old grumpy man already and uh, uh, <laughs> the young generation say, oh, he's young, he's old and, and, uh, and maybe it's the future, I don't know. Well, at least it's the job of designers to understand what it is because it's, it's going to have an impact on their work and the way uh, uh, yeah, things are uh, imitated and... Um, but regarding maybe the marketing aspect, do you think that is important for a designer to have a good relation with the marketing side? And because we know that some watches were, um, you, you said, for example, regarding the, the offshore, um, the watch was created in 1993, yeah. uh, but no, in 89, uh, the, launch, in the launch was in, I'm sorry, in 1993. Yeah. And yeah, I think you said that it was uh, promoted by Italians, if I'm correct uh so this aspect of promotion helped uh, the watch uh, be recognized italian market always been a, a great market for to launch a watch they did the, with the they did with the rylock because of the italian market the uh, the rylock exists and they help a lot it's because of the italian market that the the, the offshore exists but yes you need to i was I was lucky that with, when I worked with AP, that my CEO sent me every year to the market uh, in Italy and France and Germany, and then uh, every two years in, in in Asia and in the US, <clears throat> and I had the opportunity to discuss with our distributors, with the retailers, and sometimes at meetings or lunch, dinner, or something uh, with clients, and I was listing them and listening they complain or what they think or what they want or what they... Very different, right? Depending on the, the country you're in or the, the, uh, the it's continent. It's totally different. And uh, at this time, it was three different, uh, three different market. The design was different for the three, diff the three different you know, region. And now it's more like all the same. But it's coming back. Huh? It's, it's coming back that Asia doesn't have the same thing as... Uh, Europe and Europe doesn't seem. Uh, Europe and America is quite still the same, but uh, what uh, what would be the characteristic of the watches which are uh, more uh, appreciated in the United States or Asia? Is it a bigger watches? Uh, America is still very big, very very big, and they like with to a show lot off of and, uh, stones, yeah. right? Yeah, but Asia as well, they like uh, with a lot of stones, but they're more refined and and you know elegant and more. Sophisticated design. And in Europe, how would you describe what is uh, most uh, appreciated or sought after? Um, I think Europe it's kind of becoming minimalist and and kind of non non genre watches. And then maybe if we don't know the watch, it's even it's better. What do you mean by that? If we don't know, it's you don't know. A lot. There is always the 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 the, the kids who want oh I'm wearing a Rolex and but there is a lot of people now who wants to wear something that you don't know. Oh, so a brand which is not uh, Rolex or widely known, a more uh, yeah. having more of a maybe something unique. More yeah, unique. more unique, more, more unique and, and less risky. Uh, no, no, security. It's a big issue for watches uh, business. So. So need to think about it. And you, you do think about it as a designer, about these issues of regarding... Not all the time, because the clients I work with, it's they're not necessarily Europe, but um, yes, it's, it's something that I, can, I need to consider. Which continent are more, is more demanding in, in terms of design? Middle East and, and Asia, that's for sure, and the U.S., Okay, so Europe is in the middle. <laughs> yeah, Europe is more about prices, actually. 
So uh, uh, we have like one hour of discussion. It's it's really interesting. Yeah, and we can continue more. I would like to ask one uh, last question. Uh, It's not the last, no. It's not the last, but it's uh, one question. Question: You you talked uh, once about uh, your desire or an idea to create a foundation specialized in watch design. Is it still a project you want to realize? It's still a project, and I would like to call the Jean Claude Gate Foundation or maybe the Gate Foundation. I don't know, and um, but it's still on the thinking, and but it's it's I'm sure it's something that it's necessary. Very a lot of archives and and. Obviously, talking about uh, my father and myself, obviously, but I think need to talk about Jacqueline Dimier because she has, she has a, she made so many things incredible at AP that nobody knows, and and there is a lot of designers. I'm talking about the Geneva designers, but there is a lot of designers in the in the watch um, in La Chaux de Fonds as well, who, who needs to be well known that nobody knows. So make exhibition about designs and... And to have an, uh, so also an educational aspect. Right? Yes, yeah. And for example, I, I, I've got an intern, a lot of interns who approach me and they, they come from the head or the La Chaux de Fonds, but th- those schools doesn't have connection with brands they should they should find jobs they should they should find uh intern to the to the students but they don't it's just like okay from that month to that month you need to do an internship uh, for three months find a job so um, it's not fair i think is it's where there is a huge job to do for the for the for the kids okay so we have a couple more questions okay Um, first, um, it's my personal interest. Uh, uh, what what is one thing you wish people to know about watchmaking? In your case, it will be watchmaking design. Something that is not really seen from people who are from the outside or they don't think of it, but it's a very important aspect of your job. Is it there? Creativity. I remember was uh, I was young at AP and uh, I was painting uh, still uh, the, my designs and uh, there's uh, uh, the new people were arriving in the uh, in the company they was doing a tour in the and they go through the the visit was goes to, coming through my department and there was the guy was looking at me designing and paintings and he's like oh, who who believed that there is people who's painting in this company And he was like, "Artists, well, it's normal. <laughs> it's my job. This is every behind every every watches. There is an artist. There is a guy who's painting. Yeah, so that's important. Yeah, behind every watch, there is someone who's painting. Yeah, or or computing. Yeah, but a uh, computer. But it's like there's a there is a uh, design is not a given. Yeah, there's a designer behind every watches. Uh, now another question, a more personal question. What are for you? Uh, the most important aspects or features of a watch, maybe three. What what do you find most important for you in a watch? The dial, it's number one. What what uh, are the criteria? What do you want in a dial? I don't have any criteria, but uh, the dial is the first thing that you you see on a watch. So that must be very creative. That must be incredible. You want to look at it uh, and yeah. be surprised each time. Yes. Uh, but sometimes you do nothing, but uh, it's surprising as well. Uh, the shape. Of the case? Of the case. And then uh, the way you wear it. How it, how it sits on your wrist. What do you think about the latest trends on wearing uh, watches on different parts of your body, not on the wrist, on the ankle, on the, on the, on the, the neck, collar? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. blah. No, <laughs> not very no, practical, it's, right? Uh, <laughs> it was like you, you help other it's people. It's not a style. Time, not yeah, yours. it's nice for, for what, what would your father, as a stylist, would say about this? I don't know what he would have said. But at least you, you, you prefer to wear it on the wrist. Oh, or wrist or a necklace, you know, it's like a sautoir and stuff like that. Okay. But no, as a choker, it's like well, okay, why not? <laughs> it's a new way, new generation. It's a new way. Yeah. 
And uh, if you could only wear one watch for the rest of your life, which one will it be? The Beast. Which actually you're not wearing today, right? No, I'm not wearing today The Beast. Uh, but your Beast or just in general The Beast? Oh, my Beast. No, the, the one they did after me is like, yuck. <laughs> But you, today you're wearing a, a, an important watch for you, right? Yeah, it was my father's watch, so yeah. So it would be the second watch you would wear uh, if you could... Uh, <laughs> I have few watches. Two. Oh, yeah, I, I have few watches. I have a Rolex that I love to wear. Uh, I have two Rolexes that, that I would love to wear. One with the Tiffany blue dial and uh, one it's a quartz, 1973 quartz. Still, I love it. Love it, love it, this watch. It's fantastic. I have this Nautilus because it was my dad and my... Uh, my uh i've got the five four zero two of a uh, railog that i love it as well so they represent all the three aspects that you mentioned uh, that's important in the watch for you or it's more personal it's it's more personal i have a lot of watches really a lot of watches but i don't never wear them i always wear this these four basically Um, and now for uh, one last question. If you could meet or have a dinner with one person from the watchmaking world, dead or alive, who would it be? Who would you like to meet? With That I haven't met. You haven't met or you have met, but... My father. Just uh, out, of, out of curiosity, what do you think your father would think about the design of today's watches? He was very difficult. He was a hard man. He was a gentle, very nice man. But I remember when I was uh, in Texas, I came back to Geneva because I had a meeting in London with uh, Burberry and I was presenting the new collection and I showed him the, the, the designs and he was like turning the page and he was like, at the end, he closed the book and he said, yeah, he's giving caviar to the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was like so, for him, a watch was very luxury. Yeah, he was passionate about what he did. Yeah, you, but because he grew up in Piaget and so watches was only for rich people. He, did, he didn't really understand that the young generation, the, the, you know, they, 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 they can have watches as well. So thank you for visiting us and thank you for this very interesting uh, discussion that we have today. My pleasure, anytime. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you too. So that was it. Uh, thank you for being with us. See you soon and Viva Watch Waking! waking.